No one, seafarer or not, will ever forget these images of the cruise ship Costa Concordia, a magnificent vessel, fatally wounded, lying on her side. The fear and confusion of the escape, the tragic loss of 33 lives, the two billion pound cost of the whole disaster. But none of this was inevitable. Instead, it was a multiple failure of critical decision-making at every level. Navigation, planning, order and counter-order, even bridge protocol. We saw lots of things there break down. We saw things break down at the individual level. We saw things break down at the group level. We saw things break down actually under periods when there wasn't much pressure. And then we saw them break down even more under periods when there was a lot of pressure. So I think what this is a good lesson is, a good case study, is in everything that can go wrong if you let the smallest things go wrong in the decision-making process. Sadly, the Costa Concordia disaster, huge though it was, is far from a one-off. Our goal was to think, well, what can we do for individual seafarers? What do they know about decision making? How can we help them to improve? And then we thought, well, what can you do about group decision making at sea? Because you very rarely make decisions in, in isolation. And the next part of our challenge was to ask, well, even if you make group decisions, they're not made in a cultural vacuum. So what can we do about the uh, understanding and helping people to improve the culture at, at sea? Uh, and taking all those things together, we then asked, well, all right, it's all right telling people how to be better or that they should be better, but how do I me, me think about the training environments and helping people to get better? So those were our four main goals across this, this report. Professor Walsh and his team set out to develop a blueprint for the way in which critical decisions at sea are made and how that process can be improved to head off errors that can lead to disaster. The team identified and targeted the key points in decision-making. Making critical decisions as an individual. Making critical decisions in a group. Communicating in challenging conditions. Creating a positive error culture around mistakes and responsibility. Understanding the role of intuitive decisions and training to develop decision-making. What we found was that where there's an industry and there's a hierarchy in the culture, so not specific to shipping actually, members who are lower down in the hierarchy can fear bringing up mistakes from members in the higher up in the hierarchy. This could be because they fear being promote, not being promoted, being left out socially. And so we wanted to break this so that all errors are pointed out among a group. But what we also found was that it was very important the way in which the questions were asked. OK, chaps, uh, that's about 100 miles out now, so I'm going to get my head down for a couple of hours. He said 100 miles, didn't he? OK, chaps, uh, that's about 100 miles out now, so I'm going to get my head down for a couple of hours. Did he say 100 miles? OK, chaps. Uh, Bridge that's about 100 room. miles Watch out that. now, so I'm going to get my head down for a couple of hours. He said 100 miles, didn't he? Did he say 100 miles? Distance did he tell us? A lot of the mistakes can be avoided through adequate training. We have found that um, there are ways to teach new seafarers to mimic the uh, decision-making processes of experts. Um, 
And in the report, we talked about uh, the training methodologies that we found and we just collected all these methods into one uh, report. And oftentimes in these situations, people on the outside who have a kind of broader view of the situation are afraid to step in or to raise questions or to challenge the decision of the leader or the captain in that sense because they're afraid, they're, they're interrupting them or they're making a mistake. And in that situation, it's really helpful to have kind of an agreed on method or a standard um, so that people are comfortable with um, kind of interfering with the, with the leader or raising questions. And that method is called the PACE method. Captain, I think we're making too much headway for this turn. Our speed hasn't dropped in the last seven minutes. We're not going to make this turn. We need to make the turn now. Captain, we're going to collide with the other ship on our port bow. Captain, I'm ordering it now. Starboard 20! We found that the crew on board ships often have very particular expectations about what they should say, what they ought not to say, and the roles that other people are going to take. And these often don't really conform to the best structure for decisions to be made in. And so we thought it was very important to include in the report how we can improve and alter these hierarchies or structures so that everyone knows what they're doing, what everyone else is doing, and how those individual parts can add up to a whole that is greater than the sum of its parts. Working on ships is not the easiest of tasks. Shift work, the need to make quick decisions, fatigue and stress can all contribute to poor decision making and sometimes disastrous outcomes. These were the scenes on the bridge of the Costa Concordia as the ship foundered. In moments of critical decision making, the master may find himself isolated and ineffective due to the sudden levels of stress induced. It's at times like this that other team members need to recognize the signs and step forward and offer the support to the master. But there are signals we can all look for to see if one of our shipmates is under pressure or suffering from a shock. Two mates, where's that DPR? Uh, look, yeah, I am. I'm working no, on no, that. No, never I mind, just, look. Okay. I mean, where is it? Have I, you I, done? I'm working on it. It's just it's been very busy up here, so I haven't had the chance There's to do it. There's always an excuse I, with you, I think that's it? really quite unfair. No, I no, it's not. Just get it down to me as quickly as possible. Developing expertise through training is also crucial if we are to head off poor decisions and their consequences at sea. Best practice protocols, on-the-job learning and training system methods like tactical decision games, paper exercises with unexpected twists, all have a part to play. But in the end, how we deal with mistakes and learn from them is fundamental to sound critical decision making at sea. I think this is genuinely applicable to everybody who's involved in safety at sea and, and making sure that operations run as efficiently as they possibly can.